Hey what's up everyone, welcome to Effects Maniac, this is Sayed Mahmoud Amiri again. Welcome to another really, really cool tutorial. In this tutorial I'll be showing you guys how to create this uh, awesome effect. Come on. Uh, using um, 3ds Max, Premiere Pro, Tyflow and V-Ray. Alright, just the Premiere Pro is just for the preview purposes nothing else All right you can you can edit it but yeah so the effect is basically pretty simple uh, I mean the setup is pretty simple but what I want to emphasize on this tutorial is that even simple effects used properly can give you some beautiful results like we have here so we have a very cool logo animation you can do it this way too like the uh, the particles are forming the logo and then you can keyframe the opacity of the logo to be opaque and then they fall down and reveal the logo so you could have done it the other way you know so you can do that all right so not wasting any time uh, let's get into 3d studio max and uh, again I want to I want to emphasize that th this can be used with almost any shape any object that you want so it's a very simple effect so let's get started all right I'm gonna go and reset 3d studio max no yes so the other thing I want to do is first off I want to create my logo so I don't have a logo so I'm just gonna go with extended primitives uh, Taurus knot so this is going to be a very simple and quick tutorial but uh, um, uh, if you have any questions or anything that you uh, are new to or you're unfamiliar with make sure to tell me in the comment section alright so I'm just gonna increase the segments of this and the sides and if you want to get rid of the selection brackets, uh, the uh, older versions of 3ds Max, you could have just hit J. But in this version, I think you have to hit Shift J to be able to hide that selection bracket. So a little bit different. All right. The other thing I'm going to do is uh, create my emitter, so the source of my particles. So you just want it to be off to the side, like whichever side that you want. You can go up, down, or wherever. I just uh, prefer it to be on the left make sure it is not in the view and to make sure that it doesn't even you know just to make sure just right click go to object properties sorry not the thing the curve editor object properties come on make it not renderable so it doesn't render yeah you know and uh, that's basically our setup so let's go and create our tie flow so I'm gonna go into create panel tie flow and um, I'm gonna go into the editor and just shrink this down a little bit and just move it here alright so first off we're gonna burst some particles uh, 0 to 100 frames and I want the position to be on the sphere so I'm just gonna add a position object so yeah pick the sphere so now we have our particles getting born on the sphere alright the other thing that we want to do straight away is we want to uh, we want these particles to move into this uh, logo or any other object so there's a very cool operator for that it's called find target and as the name suggests it just you pick an object pick and the particles will just move towards that target and it'll basically try to uh, stick to it so you have some options here so the target location it is set to closest so wherever it is the closest to the object but in this case we want it to be random and also the point we also wanted to set it to random so now it's gonna go into the random parts of that object and the other thing I want to do is give him some shape so I'll just hit tab and add a shape in this case I'm just gonna be using a sphere a geosphere so 3d geosphere mid res so you can go into display and turn on geometry so now we have our little particles but they are too small so I can go and add a scale modifier and uh, just scale them up to maybe like 400 percent so now we have these particles but there are uh, a few different issues here one they're not colliding with the object so in this case we need to add a collision so if you don't know these uh, operators you know you can just go ahead and click on the operator and basically in this uh, little right 
downside, it'll basically tell you a little note about it. So force upper allows you to apply various forces to the particle. So it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, so if you don't know any of these operators, may, uh, just go and uh, you know you can also check out the Typhilo documentation. It is mentioned properly there. But even so, you can go ahead and tell me in the comment section. Uh, so maybe I'll, I'll, I'll make a tutorial about these uh, operators. You know, if you want me to do, I will surely do it. All right, so we have our collision. And now I want to pick the object that the particles are going to collide with. So I'm going to pick the sphere. So now the um, objects are going to collide with the sphere. But I think there will be a slight problem. You see here that the sphere is going through the objects. That's why, because uh, we haven't turned on. It is basically set to absolute radius. We need to set it to shape radius. So now it's going to use the shape of the particle as a radius of the collision so now they are fine and we need a lot more frames so what you can do is hold control and alt and right click and drag the timeline and you will add more frames or else you can go to the time configuration and just set it to like 500 all right so there are two ways whichever way you prefer the other pro problem is that the particles are not colliding with each other, as you can see. So um, I'm going to go and add a particle physics. So again, if you don't know the particle physics, you go down here. It says that the particle physics allows you to assign inner particle collision and cohesion forces. All right, so that's pretty self-explanatory. But the, th the problem with it is that, again, they're not really colliding with the shape of each other. So you can go and turn on the shape radius. So now they will be colliding properly. All right. So now you can see that the first part of our animation is done, you know, and it's been already like uh, three to four minutes and we've created this beautiful little animation. So you can go ahead into the birth and increase the number of particles to maybe 500. And now you'll get a lot more particles sort of, you know, in the logo so these can be anything this this logo can be a human and these particles can be like bees and flies and everything so the, the possibilities are just endless but in this case I just want to show you guys this one and of course you can go into the scale and randomize the scale so you'll have different size particles and turn on uniform of course so that they will be uniform so now you have different sized particles which will make it look a little bit better all right so the next thing is, I'm just going to move this object up because I want them to fall into the ground. So the next thing is, I want these particles, uh, it's about frame 180 or 200 that they settle down completely in the object. And after frame 200, I want them to fall down. So what you can do is you can go ahead and add a time test. And the test is basically saying if this thing is true, then do move to another event so it's basically a test so I'm saying if the frame number is greater than 200 then I want them to move to another event so in other event I'm just gonna click tab hit tab and go into particle not the particle but we want the physics shape operator so what the physics shape is gonna do is they're just gonna uh, make sure that the particles are colliding with each other and they're falling down and colliding with the floor as well all right and the other thing you want to make sure is inside the time configuration that the real time is off so that it basically calculates every single frame so now you can see we've got our basic effect and uh, it is looking pretty cool so I'm just gonna copy this display and paste it here so that they are the same all over and that is basically it, I would say, you know. Uh, some other things that you can do is maybe it's a little, you know, they just fall down a little too soon. So you can go ahead and change this to maybe 240. So now uh, until two frame 240, they're not going to do anything. And after frame 240, they're going to start falling down. All right. Um, yeah, so that's that's basically it. And the other thing you can do in, to improve the quality of the simulation, you can go into tie flow and increase the number of steps per frame. So it is just basically going to uh, improve uh, the calculation of tie flow and hence improve the quality 
of the simulation. And the other thing you can do as well is go into the physics and increase the simulation substeps to maybe 12. So mm, the substeps is basically going to increase the quality of objects interacting with each other and with other objects. All right, so it's going to make it a lot more better. So now we've got our, our animation. And now, uh, very quickly, onto the rendering part. So uh, let's just create a plane. So I'm going to control right click and add a plane and make sure that it doesn't have any segments. So right click, right click, right click, convert it to edible poly. And I'm just going to take this edge and just shift drag like that and just move it up. So I just want to create like a seamless background. And uh, I do want to scale this and take this edge and move it in. And the other thing I want to do is take this edge and move it up so that we don't see it once we sort of zoom in. So I'm just going to add a turbo smooth modifier to make it very smooth. And just move it back just like that and make it very large. And we definitely uh, we're using V-Ray for this. So I'm just going to go into render setup and set a renderer to V-Ray 5. And I'm just going to hit M and add a V-Ray material to the ground. So if I'm going a little fast, you can you can go ahead and uh, you know uh, rewatch it, or you know if you if you miss anything, make sure to tell me in the comment section. All right, um, just like that. So if I go here, now we have our logo. Our particles are forming, and then they're falling down into the ground. And to create these uh, three type materials. I just uh, went into uh, material editor, so hit M, and I created a V-Ray material for one of the balls. So I just uh, double click, make sure it is red or any color that you like. I'll, I gave you some reflection and some glossiness, and I just duplicated this and changed the color to black. And this one again to green. So now we have these three colored particles. And I want to go into the materials and I'll add a multi sub object material. And make sure the number is set to three because we only have three materials. And I'm just going to plug it onto each of these material slots or whatever they are. And I'm just going to go and apply this multi sub object material to tie flow, but then it's only accepting one of the particles because we we don't have the material ID node. So I'm just going to hit tab and add the material ID node, and it's just going to take a second to calculate and make sure it is set to random, and make sure it is set to one, two, three, because we only have three materials. All right, so we want the same thing to be on this uh, event two as well, so that they're the same all the way. So they're falling down, and we have this effect. You can, of course, you know, for your final simulation, add some camera movement and add more particles as I have here. So you can, you can, you can slow them down, you know. And if they are moving a little too fast, you can go, once you've done the simulation and everything is right, you can go into tie flow and you can go into the retimer and retimer by speed, make sure, maybe like make it 30. So now they are sort of slowly sort of, you know, and if you want it to be even slower, you can even make it like 10, you know, so they're like very very slow so you may need to increase your frame so just control alt and right click and drag and now you can see that the particles are sort of moving very slowly as we have them here and as for the lighting I've just added three lights so I'm just gonna go here probably like yeah right here um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna turn off the retimer because it's gonna take a lot of time and a lot of frames actually so I'll just go ahead here and uh, let it calculate the frames. And I'm just going to zoom in here, zoom out actually a little bit. 
and I've added like three lights so I'll go to VRA light and I'll add a plane just drag it here and uh, move it to this side just like that and I want to set it as a targeted so I'll set the target down here and I just want to copy this so I'll just select this light make sure that in the selection it will only select light so that we can select this and I'm just going to shift drag one to this side and make sure it is an instance so that if we bring a chain to one of them it'll basically share the changes to all of these so I've just added here and I'm going to go into the options make it invisible and in order to see these particles in the render I'm just going to go back and select all I'm going to select the type flow open the editor and make sure to add a mesh operator so I'll just uh, drag it here and drag it here and if I go back to my camera view there's no camera so no problem just gonna go here like this and just going to the V-Ray IPR so now that you can see that they're they're just a little too bright so I'm just gonna select one of the lights the light select it make sure it is like what 10 or 8 you know so now they're like perfectly fine so now from now onwards you can go ahead and play with the lighting with the shaders with the camera animation and the material of your logo and everything to get this uh, perfect effect and perfect lighting that you're looking for and I just added a little optical flares in after effects and that is basically it so i hope you guys enjoyed this video and tell me guys if i, I if i just went a little too quick because i I'm expecting you know the basics of Thai flow, and if you don't, you can tell me in the comments. I can make a uh, you know beginner's tutorial inside of Thai flow, so you can go ahead and tell me in the comment section for this tutorial. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, you know it would mean a lot to me if you just subscribe to my channel and like my videos. And it would mean a lot to me if you subscribe to my second channel, Audio Aura. So if you need royalty-free, no copyright music, different kinds of music. You can, you can go ahead and subscribe and use our music, so no, no copyrights, completely free. And also make sure to follow me on Instagram, so you can check out some of my works and stuff, so if you like, just follow me there. Alright, so this was the today's tutorial. Until the next one, enjoy working!